Welcome to the South African Civil Society Information Service. I'm Fazila Farak in Johannesburg. Ever since 1948, since Palestinian people were expelled from their homes and dispossessed of their land um, by colonial powers who had done that to establish the State of Israel, their struggle for freedom and for democracy has made international headlines. Now, it's been more than 60 years since the formation of the State of Israel. And in this time, successive rounds of negotiations and so-called peace talks have yielded no settlement that is viable for the people of Palestine. In fact, there's widespread acknowledgement that the international community seemed to have failed the people of Palestine. But as we enter 2014, are we also entering a new era? U.S. Secretary of State John Kerry seems to have embraced his role with a great deal of enthusiasm. He's jumped in and is putting together a new framework for an agreement. Are we likely to see some change in the Palestinian situation? Helping us to make sense of this question is Naeem Gina. Naeem is the Executive Director of the Afro-Middle East Center. Welcome to Saxe's name. Thank you. Now, Naeem, I'd like you to talk to us about latest developments in relation to Palestine. As I said, it's been a long drawn out process of negotiation that hasn't resulted in anything tangible for the Palestinians in particular. Are the efforts of the new US Secretary of State possibly going to yield some results? I, I really don't think that we should put much store on, on these efforts. I think that uh, Kerry is very enthusiastic. Um, he wants to see some kind of breakthrough taking place and uh, I think in the past six months he's visited uh, the area um, you know about a dozen times or more than a dozen times so he you know he's, he's putting a lot of energy into it um, if he does get it right of course if he does get a breakthrough it will really help his presidential campaign uh, when Obama's term comes to an end um, so that, that that's part of it but I don't think that it's going to yield much success I don't think that there's uh, uh, any kind of seriousness from the Israeli side uh, to make this happen and, and they're going to uh, place conditions along the way that will make it impossible for any kind of uh, uh, solution that can be acceptable to the Palestinians. What um, are the sticking points for the Palestinians at this point? Well, you know, in, in terms of the way that the, that the Palestinian Authority, uh, Mahmoud Abbas and, and others from, from Fatah are negotiating this, they've essentially agreed that they would settle for uh, a two-state solution. So a Palestinian state uh, alongside an Israeli state. In terms of that kind of framework, then, the sticking points, because you know, there are other frameworks and so the sticking points will be more. But in terms, of that, in terms of that framework, the sticking points would be, for example, the issue of settlements. Um, that uh, the, the demand from Palestinians, of course, is that all these settlements which are built uh, on Palestinian land, uh, on land that would form part of a Palestinian state, that these settlements must be, uh, must be dismantled, all the settlers must be removed. All of these settlements, of course, are illegal under international law. Um, very interesting, there was a, an editorial in the Financial Times uh, um, around the whole debate on Scarlett Johansson's uh, endorsement of SodaStream. Um, and for the Financial Times to come out as strongly as it did, um, saying that the settlements are all illegal, etc. Um, I think that there's, there's a realization dawning on, on the world in general that this is not a st sustainable way to move forward. The Israelis don't agree. So the Israelis are refusing to, to dismantle settlements. Uh, they want to keep the settlement blocks within a state of Israel. Um, so the settlements is, is one issue. The other issue is, of course, the, the borders of what a, a future Palestinian state would be. Um, the Israelis, again, want, uh, want borders that uh, that'll include parts of the West Bank, for example. Uh, the Palestinians obviously don't. Um, a third and big sticking point uh, is the issue of uh, the Jordan Valley, which is uh, on the east of the West Bank, if you like, along the Jordan River. So the West Bank is the West Bank of the Jordan River. So along the Jordan River, and, and Israel is insisting that it uh, should be able for an indefinite period of time to have its troops stationed along, along that uh, river uh, in the Jordan Valley. Um, the Palestinians are insisting that it must be for a limited period of about three years. Now, what that means, of course, is if, if Israel gets its demand, um, what it means is that Palestinians will have 
no border except for one border with Egypt from Gaza. Um, they'll have no border uh, except with Israel, um, which you know is the current situation of, of the West Bank. Then two other big sticking points are that the Israelis are demanding that uh, for, for the process to move forward, Palestinians must recognize Israel as a Jewish state. Um, this has serious repercussions. I mean, firstly, of course, you, you know, South Africa can't demand that Zimbabwe recognize us as a neoliberal state or, or whatever, communist state or whatever you like. You recognize us as a state. We will define who we are. But the, the importance in this context is that if Palestinians or if the so-called leadership of, of, of the Palestinians, if the PLO, for example, which is you know, supposed to represent all Palestinians around the world, uh, wherever they might be. If the PLO were to recognize Israel as a Jewish state, um, that would have two very serious implications. One implication is for the 20% of Israel's citizens who are Palestinians, um, so just over a million Palestinians who are citizens of Israel, um, what would their status be then in terms of Israel now being recognized by Palestinians as a Jewish state. Uh, <clears throat> would they then be second class citizens as they you know, currently are, or fourth class if they, as they might refer to themselves? Um, would they uh, be then forced to relinquish their citizenship of, of the state of Israel because your representatives have agreed that it's a Jewish state and so you have no place here, etc. Um, so th that's the one big implication. The other big implication of course is for the refugees. Um, so you have now about 6 million Palestinian refugees living um, mostly in refugee camps in, in Syria, in Lebanon, in Jordan, etc. Um, and recognizing if, if the leadership of the Palestinian people or representatives of the Palestinian people recognize Israel as a Jewish state, um, the implication of that on all of those Palestinian refugees who are demanding as is their right under international law, that they be uh, allowed to return to what used to be their homes in what is currently Israel, um, that would be compromised. Uh, because Israel will say, well, sorry, you know, but we are a Jewish state, and, and so we can't allow this, this kind of thing to happen. So these are, these are some of the sticking points that really you can't get over. Finally, let me just say that the framework within which all of this is taking place is very much, from the Israeli perspective, very much a situation where they want, um, they want to legitimize a kind of Bantustan Palestine, uh, as they would call it, uh, and legitimize it um, to the international community as a state, while it actually is a Bantustan. I want to pick up on two issues that you mentioned. One is settlement encroachment. And given that, you know, with the current reality on the ground, there's so little land for Palestinians, do you think that, you know, going forward, the struggle could become one for a, a, a one-state solution? And, and the second point I wanted to, to highlight in terms of what you spoke about was this issue of um, which Scarlett Johansson brought to light with her endorsement of SodaStream. And that's the BDS campaign, the Boycott, Divestment and Sanctions campaign. Um, can you talk to us about you know, the state of that campaign? Is it getting uh, more support internationally? Firstly, in, in, in terms of the um, one state, two state uh, debate, you know, in, in some ways, that debate has now become something of a red herring. Because the reality is that there is a single state. Um, Israel controls all of what used to be British Mandate Palestine. Um, it has an authority in place in the West Bank, which it has endorsed. Um, it has Gaza, which is completely under siege um, and which it controls access to, uh, access from, uh, controls its airspace, controls its uh, coastline, controls its borders, etc. Okay? So in, in reality, you have a one state uh, in, on, on British Mandate Palestine, uh, but a one state which is divided and different parts of that state are controlled in different ways. Uh, part of it is under siege, part of it is uh, military occupation, part of it is controlled by, uh, by, uh, by a Palestinian authority that is uh, endorsed by, by the State of Israel, part of it is controlled by a civilian Israeli government. But all of it is really one state. Now, um, where the Israelis want to go is really to maintain this one state uh, uh, situation. Right? 
Um, the Palestinian Authority is arguing that there should be two states and each state should be sovereign and viable, etc. Um, this is really the, 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 the difference. Um, the Palestinian Authority position, however, is, um, is a position that is getting weaker and weaker. Even among Palestinians, Palestinians have uh, um, always dreamt of having a single state solution. Um, and increasingly, Palestinians even that were willing after Oslo to say, okay, you know, maybe if we accept this two-state thing, there's a possibility we could have peace, etc. Many of, of those Palestinians are now saying this is just not workable. Um, there's no such thing as a two-state solution um, and it's not going to happen. And so the only way forward is a one-state solution. Um, I think that, that really the Palestinian Authority is negotiating on very weak ground. Um, they're not going to get what they want in terms of their, their two-state solution. Um, and ultimately, that's where this is going to go. Um, and if I might just interject on that, what about international support for a one-state solution? There isn't inter in international state support for one-state solution. Um, and, and I don't think that there, I don't think that there will be unless Palestinians, um, initially Palestinians, and then Palestinians and Israelis um, call for it or, or support it. Then, of course, the international community will have to go along with what the, uh, the inhabitants of the area want. But at the moment, in terms of international law, of course, um, what we should be having is the two states, is two states. Um, a Palestinian state with no settlements, um, uh, where Palestinian refugees have the full right of return, um, where the borders of a Palestinian state are defined uh, as per 1967 uh, borders. So under international law, that is the position that should be moved towards. And so all states in the world uh, support that, at least officially support that. Okay. Um, so, uh, so states are not going to change that position un unless there's a call from Palestinians and, and Israelis to, to, to change that position. Um, I think that, that what is required uh, is then an acceptance uh, from Palestinians and, and the leadership of, of Palestinian uh, groups. Um, the Palestinian Authority, the PLO, but other groups as well, <clears throat> whether you talk about Hamas and, and others that are not part of the PLO, um, that this is the way forward. That the only way forward is a one-state solution because a two-state solution is, um, is, is a no-starter. Um, and then begin negotiating on, on that basis. Um, that's going to be a long process. Uh, Palestinians at the moment are the weaker party in these negotiations. It's going to be a long process. Uh, Palestinians are going to have to dig their heels in and prepare for um, a longer struggle than it has been. That brings us, of course, to the issue of, of BDS. And um, BDS is very much part of that Palestinian struggle. The, the BDS campaign that was launched in 2005 um, actually, uh, in terms of these objectives, um, in terms of the question of the nature of a Palestinian state, um, is quite vague. So the BDS call doesn't support a one-state solution. Um, it supports international law. That's what the call is. Um, you can interpret it as being other things, but uh, it, it quite clearly is on the basis of international law. Um, so it talks about uh, um, a Palestinian state, it talks about the rights of return of refugees, and it talks about the rights of Palestinian citizens of Israel. Okay, the three kind of components, the three main components uh, of, of the Palestinian population. Over the past eight years, um, that BDS call has had the kinds of success in eight years that it took us in South Africa for our san sanctions campaign, took a few decades uh, to, to, to get. So you've reached the stage where not only is the campaign, you know, when, when, they, when they speak about BDS, the expectation is that it's really in that order. Boycotts first, where you get uh, consumers and, and ordinary people to kind of boycott products, put pressure, etc. Uh, moving on to divestment, where you get companies to divest, and finally, where governments actually implement sanctions. Um, that order doesn't make sense anymore. So you have, for example, government pension funds in some Scandinavian countries that are withdrawing their funds from, uh, from companies that, uh, that support Israel or that have large-scale investments in Israel um, or the European campaign about, uh, uh, about settlement products, saying that settlements are illegal under international law and therefore any products coming out of there are illegal, etc. Um, so you, you're having these kinds of successes that are taking place across the three levels. 
uh, boycotts, divestment and sanctions. So divestment, you've seen universities, for example, taking resolutions in, in the US. You've seen uh, big church organizations in the US, which with, with considerable investment funds um, that have decided that they divesting, for example, from Caterpillar because of Caterpillar's role um, in, in the destruction of houses, etc., in, uh, in, in the West Bank and previously in Gaza. So, um, so the campaign is actually, um, has been phenomenally successful in the past eight years. Um, it's not successful enough that, uh, that Israel is at the point where it will be forced to give in to the demands made by the campaign. But, uh, but the fact that Israel is genuinely concerned about the campaign means that it is making some strides. So there's a whole kind of counter, uh, an Israeli counter campaign to, to, to BDS, um, talking about um, this attempt at delegitimizing, as they call it, uh, the Israeli state, uh, make it um, seem as if this is uh, anti-Semitic, anti-Jewish, etc., etc. Um, and, and, and the reason for this Israeli counter campaign is because uh, they've seen clearly that the BDS uh, call is making success, uh, is having successes, and that it is able to unite um, solidarity activists and Palestinians across the world on a kind of minimum pl minimal platform, um, which even the PLO is not able to do at the moment. Right? So the BDS campaign has actually, without being an organization, um, is actually able to provide a, a uniting platform for solidarity activists and Palestinians around the world. So what does the future hold then for the people of Palestine in the immediate future, in your view? In the immediate future, nothing much, frankly. Um, I think that, that, that Israelis are, and irrespective of whether it's the current government or, um, or labor government, uh, which is supposedly in Israel left, um, I, I don't think that that really matters. Um, whichever government is in place, um, Israelis are, are pushing um, and making uh, one state solution the only possible solution, but they're pushing to steal as much Palestinian land uh, in the course of that uh, as, as they possibly can, and to get rid of as many Palestinians as, as they possibly can. Um, I think for Palestinians, the, the challenge is just to live with integrity and to live on the land and, and not to leave. Name Gina, thank you very much for joining us at Saxis. Thank you. And thank you to our viewers and listeners for joining us at Saxis. And remember, if you want more social justice news and analysis, you can get that at our website at saxis.org.za.